close date has nothing in it yet, right? So it's not going to be repeating at all. So what do we do? How do we actually add things to it? Well, the very first step was we added a sales date column, right? And if I come over here and I click run, I now come back over here and there's my sales date column right over there, right? And you guys can see that, okay, look, there's, um, what I did was I added every single sales date over here as a group, but that doesn't really look like anything. That's just two blank columns because there were two unique cases of, there were two distinct or unique cases of sales, right? 1509 and 16209. All right, let's go back and make some changes right now just to get this going. So we got all that down, but what we're going to do is we're going to change the value that gets displayed on top. Instead of just using a field, in this first case, what we're going to use now is we're going to use an expression. Now, we haven't done expressions yet, but let me explain what they are. They are formulas that render a value, and we'll be using these in a later tutorial a lot. We'll, we'll continue to use them in all the tutorials, really, but especially in later ones, we're going to see how it works. So I'm going to right-click on the expression, and then I'm going to left-click on expression over here, which means that which means that instead of giving me this value, which is which means, which means the current value of the sales date, I want to generate some some value instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it right over here to give me another value called week day name. So I'm going to get a day name like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I'm going to say look at the date part. So look at the part of the date right over there essentially, okay? Um, look at the part of the date over there. And then what I'm going to do is when I look at some date, I'm going to extract a week um, I'm going to actually abstract a weekday name from it. So you guys can see this over here. There's my W over there for that. And then comma, and then fields, and then exclamation mark, sales data dot value right over there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down right over here, and I'm going to click OK. Now you might be like, oh my God, Brandon, where did you know how to write that? You're a genius. No, actually I'm not. And um, um, there's a guide that everyone goes to right over here, which tells you how to write SSRS expressions. We're going to write more of them in here anyway as you begin to write over, as you begin to go over there. But it shows you what all that stuff means right over here. Tells you exactly where to go for the expressions by seeing the SSRS expression guide, and you can go through it and see. Okay, these are what the expressions mean. These are the different formulas that I've got depending upon whatever you're doing, and this can be extremely helpful. So very, very helpful link over there just to get started, but that's what I typically do, especially whenever I forget them, and everybody does, um, depending upon how long, you know, I've been, um, 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 how long I've had to use a particular expression in work or something like that. So I come back over here now, okay, and I'm going to bring this back up over here, and now I've got an expression. Now let me click on the expression just to show you what it does. So I'm going to click Run, whoop, and I accidentally made one wrong little typo. Let me see what it was real quick. It's a good typo to make on video, I suppose. There we go. And let me see where I put the little typo on. So there's my little colon, comma, and let's see, weekday name, and then date part right over here. And then there we go, came back with date part, and it was just like that, which was perfect. And then there was my little W, which was actually perfect. And then there was my fields, and then there was my sales, date instead of a woo told you can make errors just like that so there's sales date dot value now let me click okay there we go now we've actually got it in there so there's the sales date and now watch as we go ahead and we expand things out now um there's monday there's tuesday now i'll expand it out and voila look at that monday tuesday now it's still blank there's nothing under those groups but we at least see at the very beginning that, okay, look at that. We got groups for Monday um, Monday and Tuesday. Okay, excellent. All right, now we're starting to rock and we're getting a lot further. So by now, you've just learned how to also substitute expressions in for different types of reports. Awesome. Okay, um, and you can use it to fill in values, right? Excellent. And you've learned how to add a group so that you got true expansion um, within a column. So rather than right-click and add column, we learned instead add group adjacent right, adjacent left, at the level, um, at the level of the column that's there. So, for example, if you want to add something that's going to appear in all different groups or a column that appears for every single group, add it at the highest level right over there. So, so, so go with add group adjacent right right over there um, at the highest level, and that ensures that a column is going to appear for all groups. If you want to, if you want the column to only appear at lower levels, go to one of the lower level column groups and add it adjacent right or left. All right. Now let's go a little bit further over there. And you guys might see a typo in the book where it says look to the left when in fact it's to the right. 
Um, I think you guys all see that right off the bat. So just kind of keep that in mind. That that in fact this 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 value is to the right right over here. Okay. Now once we actually get that going, let's go a little bit further. Um, let's put some contents in this group this time so that this group is actually showing some things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm a, is I'm gonna first find the what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna first I'm gonna first find the total column, right click on it and click copy. Now that's just a label. That's all it is. Just a label over there. So I'm gonna put a total over here. But I'm putting a label right over there so that when things actually when things actually expand out by copying and pasting the label, I can now go ahead and see, oh, okay, that's the total over there. So it's got meaning for my users, right? And it's all about meaning for the users. So that's what we're actually doing. All right, now, once we actually do that, what we want to do next is we want to take the sales column, essentially the header plus the three cells below it, and we want to copy those. So here's sales column right beneath, right beneath sub, um, subcategory. And then I'm going to highlight all three of these cells right beneath it, and I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to paste it. Now what I've just done by doing a copy and paste is this is going to ensure for every single group that's created here Monday, it's going to display a sales, and for Tuesday, I'm going to be able to see the sales too. So if my users want to see sales grouped by Monday and Tuesday rather than one such and such, 09 or whatever, they can see it just like this. Very, very handy. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now let's see how that works. Except for over here, we just have Monday and Tuesday because we only had two days in our value in, inside of our data set. So I click run. Oh, nice, nice, nice. There's all of Monday's total sales. There's all of Tuesday's total sales right over here. So we get very, very nice behavior over there. Um, watch this. I can expand it out. Let me expand digital, for example. And now for digital, I come over there and I see, I still see all of Monday's total sales, right? And I still see all of Tuesday's total sales. So very nice because those two groups were not um, within each other, right? Now, the row groups, though, when I click like this, I now start seeing all of Monday's total sales for every single for every single one of the row groups over here for 105 and 106, right? Then I see <clears throat> Tuesdays for the north again for both of those, and then I see the souths. So look at this very nice behavior over there, and it's smart. It knows which value is Monday, which value is Tuesday, because we towed it to inside of the actual, you know, inside of the actual formula. So nice, nice, nice at this point. All right. Now, we have gotten a lot further. We have built some things up, and by now you're using matrices, and you're like, oh, boy, I can't wait to jump on this. But let me just explain a few more things to you before you finish this up. So let's finish up this tutorial. Um, right off the bat, one of the most common things we're going to have to deal with, guys, and this is, this is overwhelming, is you guys see sometimes you'll, you'll have, um, sometimes you'll just have too much real estate being used. And remember, our entire purpose was to go ahead and actually minimize the real estate, right? When I click run over here, notice how quantity is occupying all this extra space. Couldn't I have made that smaller for the user? See that? Probably giving it an abbreviation like QTY would have been the best way to do it. And you can see over here, Q, you, you can see over here, it's just occupying way too much real estate. We need to go ahead and, and make this column smaller so that it doesn't expand out as far horizontally. Well, that's easy to do. I'm going to click on design. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the value of quantity over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click inside of it, inside of each text box, delete, and so I just left clicked inside, delete all that stuff and put QTY. Come back in again, delete all that stuff and click QTY. And you see, this is what an experienced report writer does almost naturally within time because you begin to pick up on that whole entire best practice of, of, you know, of you know, less space is better. So there's QTY, QTY, QTY right over there. Okay, excellent. Okay, now, once we get to UTY, it's going to ask for something else, too. It wants us to take it and reduce the actual size of each column, essentially, to half an inch, right? And you can see over here that whenever you see this, this looks very difficult initially, but we've got some help. Let me show you the help right now. The help is right here inside of, this, inside of what's known as the ruler. This ruler, if you notice, every single column starts from, like, for example, 8 over to the very end, so that's one inch. 7 over here, that's another inch. Six over here, that's an inch too. If we need to reduce these in half, then all we have to do is simply look at our column beginning, column ending, right, and bring it down to half. So here's what we do. I'm going to click off this for a moment. Okay, first, click inside the table so that we get these two gray bars because that's what allows us to do our adjustments on columns. 